This tutorial is to help you practice honing your formal analysis skills. So at this point you have been introduced to formal analysis through some readings and through your other online lectures and now it's time to put what you have learned into practice. Now before continuing this video what I suggest is for you to pause the video and to try to conduct an informal analysis on your own and then compare your formal analysis to the formal analysis that I'm about to provide. So pause the video and then when you're done come back and we'll continue. Okay, so here we have a portrait by the artist Elaine de Kooning, who was a member of the abstract expressionist style. This is kind of a rare abstract expressionist image in the sense that it's pretty representational. We can see what we're looking at. Um, but this will be good because this will be uh, something that will be relatively straightforward in terms of conducting a formal analysis. Now, when I do formal analysis, I um, tend to sort of combine the two first steps and I will identify and analyze at the same time. So we know with identify you pick out what seem to be important um, principles of design, important um, formal elements and simply just identify them and in the second step you analyze them and you attach meaning to them or suggest why the artist selected these elements that she did. Now in this case I have included the formal considerations that we can think about. Um, in terms of line, what we see is we do see quite a bit of diagonal line. And you can see this primarily in the shape of the legs. We've got diagonal lines here. We have diagonal lines in the positioning of the arms. So quite a bit of diagonal lines. And these are analytical diagonal lines. So they're sharp, straight diagonal lines. And we know that diagonal lines tend to create a sense of tension. Shape. Um, with the shapes, they're kind of irregular shapes that are just used to construct the body. I personally don't see too much significance in the shape that she used. It's pretty utilitarian, simply shapes to reflect form. Compositional space. This I do think is important, where you have this figure here that takes up the majority of the compositional space. It makes the figure appear large in size, and that can convey a sense of power and a sense of authority rather than if he was really small sort of drowning in this open space of the composition he might not seem so powerful or authoritative. Color. The color here to me seems a bit contrasty. There seems to be a little bit of a con of a complementary color scheme where we have uh, lots of greens and lots of reds or orangey reds and we know that with complementary color schemes that they tend to create also a sense of tension because they're jarring they don't sit well um, in the eyes again they're very contrasty complementary would think that these colors are friends they get along they complement each other it's a little bit of a misleading term because they, they're not friends they don't get along they sort of contrast off one another. Um, scale. I actually don't know the size of this piece. I tried to find it. I couldn't. Um, but I compared this um, portrait of John F. Kennedy to other ones that she did. She did a total of six and the other ones tend to be larger in size. So this one I am assuming is also larger in size and we know that with um, scale large size is great to indicate power and authority. Um, I think it's interesting because of the size here if it was hanging on a wall it would be probably sitting right around here is at viewers eye line which I think is really interesting and if you think about things like implied lines the way that the eye is you know directed you can see that these legs almost create implied lines that also lead towards the crotch crotch also is at the center of the piece as well so this is like kind of a, a point of focus where people are going to be sort of concentrating on visually um, I think that this is really an interesting compositional choice that de Kooning is making here because typically with portraits the point of focus would be the face because the whole point of the piece is to um, you know 
depicts the likeness of a person. These are works of art that are about people. Yet to me, the more sort of commanding area of the composition um, is the crotch. So one other thing to consider, it's not necessarily a formal consideration, but you certainly can include it with formal analysis is the title. Title is John F. Kennedy. So okay, that gives us an idea of who we're looking at, and that is helpful because it might kind of explain some of the um, conclusions that I've made in the analysis phase of formal analysis, the idea of power and authority. Now, here comes the important part is the interpret part where we put all of this together. What could all of this mean? So I think that this, in my, my, my interpretation, there's a lot of uh, masculine undertones that there's th the masculinity is kind of part of the message of this piece. Now we can think about this idea of political power traditionally, and this is throughout all of history, political power has been conceptualized as being masculine. So that kind of makes sense um, there. The body language to me is uh, kind of contradictory. There's like a closed off aspect to it at the top with the arms across, but yet the legs are, are splayed open. So maybe this idea that, you know, that he's kind of open, but there's a part of him that's like kind of closed off or unac un unaccessible. Now, this, you can, you can stop here, um, but with art history we do um, tend to take it one step further in the interpret phase by including some research or bringing in some uh, prior knowledge. And so, and this is what you would do if you were writing a paper or something along these lines. So, um, in terms of what I, I already know about the style, right, how do I relate what I'm seeing here to, to the style? Abstract Expressionism was a style that was um, considered to be very masculine. It was very heroic. They created these really large uh, works that seemed to be very authoritative. Sometimes they were considered to be almost aggressive. Elaine de Kooning had a hard time fitting in with this style as one of the few women associated with this um, approach to art making. Um, she also had, from what I understand, a tumultuous relationship with her husband, Willem de Kooning. And so the um, this, this masculinity, this kind of aggressive interface masculinity that we see here, this could be de Kooning's comments on sort of the masculine undertone of the abstract expressionist style and also maybe even um, reflecting some of the challenges that she had with her husband, with her marriage, um, and things like that. De Kooning did make artwork um, that many feminist art historians and critics felt to be sort of misogynist, so he might not have been like the greatest husband in, in that way. The other thing that's interesting is she makes a lot of other, and this is where the research part comes in, I did a little research, she makes a lot of other portraits of men where the crotch is really an emphasized component. So she may be using her work to sort of critique or examine notions of masculinity during this time. Further research that I did, I read some interviews that, that um, de Kooning had given she did six, as I said, portraits of John F. Kennedy, some of which are included in the very prestigious portrait collection, the National Portrait Gallery in Washington. She did six total of John F. Kennedy, um, and she started in 1962, which was the year before he was assassinated. And this was one of the last pieces that she did before she, he was assassinated. She said that she um, saw him as larger in life, which is probably why we have a large portrait of him, even though I don't know the size. Um, but she saw that he was always restless, always moving. And so that could explain why we have the brushwork. I mean, stylistically, the the gestural brushwork is very typical of abstract expressionism. But it also the, the sort of uh, agitated brushwork that we see here could also be sort of showing that he's restless, he's always moving. And the tension could be a representation of political conflict. The tension that we see through the diagonal lines, uh, the agitated brushwork, the contrasty complementary color scheme, that perhaps there was um, political conflicts at the time. So I would do further research and I'd say, okay, well, what was going on in 1963 that Kennedy was having to deal with? And that might explain why she is including this sense of tension within her work. So just to kind of sum up, you know, we, we look at this painting, we look at the way she constructed it, nothing's accidental, nothing's coincidental. 
She strategically selected certain types of lines and colors, the space, the size, and she used these to communicate a message. And we want to think about this message that she's communicating with in context. The context of the style, abstract expressionism, but also further context that will require um, research to understand um, what was going on at the time, what was her approach, things along those lines.